Hi everyone, it is Sarah and this week I am covering Soho, Nolita and Little Italy all in one guide. It's going to be amazing because these are some of my favorite areas. But I have a special guest for this video and he's right here. Yes. Hello. How are you? This is my friend Tom and um, he actually is going to be taking over my Secrets of New York tour. He's a tour guide yeah. and a comedian and is a lawyer. He used to be a lawyer. <laughs> Very important. <laughs> um, so we're going to be exploring it together, and you know this area really well. Actually, the way I met you was on a tour of this area. Yep, doing this a lot. Yeah. So we're going to be going to a few of our favorite spots today, um, places that you definitely can't miss when you're exploring these areas. So let's be gun. Let's do it. Let's do it. So I'm excited to announce that I will also be giving away my Soho Nolita and Little Italy guide for free this episode as well. You can find it in my Bubble Up folder. For those of you that are not part of my Bubble Up folder yet, why aren't you? In it, you'll find all of my top tips, suggestions, uh, other guides, checklists, custom maps, and much, much more so that you can make your trip to New York, or if you live here, even more fun. And the great thing about Bubble Up is that you can design your own custom folders and sort out all the things that you want to do while you're here in New York and make your own. So fun stuff. Make sure you click on the link below to get my Bubble Up guide to these neighborhoods. And let's begin our tour today. So where are Soho, Nolita, and Little Italy? Well, overall they're in downtown Manhattan. But if you wanna know the exact borders, it is um, south of Greenwich Village and Noho, north of Tribeca and Chinatown, west of the Bowery, and east of Sixth Ave. So how do you get here? Well, you can take the R, the W to Prince, the C, the E, or the Sixth train to Spring Street. Okay, so how much does it cost? Well, you guys have some sad news for you because this is one of the most expensive areas of the city. For a cup of coffee, on average, you're gonna be spending around $4. Eww. Yeah, I know, terrible. And if you wanna live here, a one bedroom apartment is on average around $4,100. Ah! So what's the culture of these three areas? Well, if we're talking Soho and Nolita, it's incredibly fashionable, chic and sophisticated. You'll see tons of stores. It's often common to see models doing photo shoots for magazines here. But if we're talking about Little Italy, it's definitely super touristy. Um, and it's an area that not a lot of New Yorkers actually come to. You have those Italian vibes, but it's not the real Little Italy like you would find in Arthur Avenue in the Bronx. Is it safe? Absolutely. This is one of the safest areas in the entire city. Now for the history, but you know what? I'm gonna let Tom handle this one because he is the tour guide after all. Sure. Take it over, Tom. All right, see you later. Don't get hit by a car. <laughs> so anyways, Soho actually stands for South of Houston because it's a neighborhood south of Houston Street and it's pronounced Houston, not Houston. So don't go up to anyone and say, how do I get to Houston Street? Because then they're gonna know you're a tourist and then they're gonna rob you. Up until the late 1700s, it was actually farmland uh, when it actually started to be developed by the owners of that land to be a suburb of New York, actually, which was growing at the time. So after the neighborhood was a little suburb for a few decades, the mid-1800s hit. That's when it underwent a major change. Uh, New York City was booming, and the Industrial Revolution took off, as well as immigration. So industry was looking for a place to set up shop, and it chose Soho. It chose the Lower East Side, it chose this whole area, and it demolished the little tiny three-story houses, and it built huge industrial buildings like these to house the industry. So this neighborhood actually, by the end of the 1800s, became the number one clothing manufacturer in the entire country and continued as an industrial neighborhood throughout the early 1900s all the way until after World War II. You know that war that your dad won't stop talking about? That one. It changed significantly then. To what? I don't know. Who knows? We'll find out. Keep watching. Stop looking at me. So after World War II, the neighborhood underwent another change. Industry started leaving the cities. Land was more available outside the cities and it was more accessible because of highways. So it became what we call in the United States a slum. This place was a dump. No one wanted to be here. In fact, in the 1960s, they were going to tear down this whole neighborhood for a highway called the Lomax, the Lower Manhattan Expressway, that was going to connect both sides of the island. But it was blocked by a popular movement led by a woman named Jane Jacobs. And it was saved. And then it actually underwent its next change. I'll talk about that here in a second. Look, chapstick. Let's go. 
So after a few years of it being a slum, artists started moving in because it was cheaper here and it was very close to Greenwich Village where they were already starting to be priced out of. That's around the time it got the name Soho. This is like the 60s, early 70s. Anyways, it starts to become a cool, hip neighborhood. People are going to Soho. They're going to party in lofts, baby. They were drinking beers and smoking cigarettes. So cool. Disco was actually invented nearby. Anyways, after a couple of decades of that, then who comes into a neighborhood? Money, baby. So now this neighborhood is very expensive. Some would say it's actually the end point of a process we like to call gentrification. I wouldn't say this word too loud in New York City. You might have someone pop out of a trash can to tell you their opinion on it. But this is a very nice neighborhood now. You got like fancy boutiques and things and the artists, get them out of here. They don't live here anymore. Go get a real job, loser. This is a rich people's neighborhood now, baby. But now it's uh, Soho. So. to New York without doing brunch so Tom and I are starting the day with uh, brunch we are here at the cupping room cafe this is a landmark building by the way and uh, it's over a hundred years old they have these beautiful exposed brick walls they have a pot belly stove in the corner what did you get Tom I got the eggs benedict <laughs> okay yeah, and they good. have a uh, eggs benedict bar here by the way so they have a lot of different options you got the one with the Canadian bacon yeah. um, I also have two dishes I want to showcase here. Okay, this is their Southern Mix, and you can choose from their waffles, their pancakes, or their French toast with this one. It comes with a side of bacon and, of course, eggs. You know, well-rounded meal. And I got the waffles. Look at how pretty that is. Oh my God, I'm so oh, yeah. Now, you know, I went to Clinton Street Baking Co., which is known to have the best pancakes in the city, so I am like a little bit skeptical. Even better than IHOP? That's tricky, that's hard to beat. <laughs> It's good. Really fluffy. So brunch is like a staple in New York. There's a lot of really good brunch spots here in Soho. One of the most popular is Sedell's. Sedell's is very difficult to get into for reservations on weekends. So if you want to go to Sedell's, make sure you um, reserve in advance. But this is another great spot too. Let's try the waffles now. I don't know why. I just is like craving this. Normally I'm not one to order waffles because they're so heavy. Mm. Love that. Super yummy. And I got a vanilla latte. All right, let's enjoy this meal because we are about to go shopping. Are you ready to get the fab, most fabulous clothes? That's right, and go completely broke. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> Very expensive, so. I know. Don't worry, I have some spots. Hell yeah, let's do yeah. it. So after brunch, of course you have to head to Soho and Nulita for shopping. This spot is known for shopping. We have everything from luxury stores to budget stores to chain stores to vintage shops. This is one of my favorite luxury vintage shops. It's called What Goes Around Comes Around. Make sure you to check it out because there's a lot of really rare, beautiful items in here that you're not gonna find anywhere else. But to see a full list of all of my favorite shops, head to my bubble up folder where you're gonna find the Soho Nolita and Little Italy guide and I'll have a list of everything right there. If you're looking for where to shop in these areas, in general, if you're on Broadway, that's where most of the brand name stores are. You're gonna find H&M, Topshop, um, TJ Maxx. And then if you go off on the side streets, that's where you're gonna find most of the designer stuff. I love Elizabeth Street here in Nolita. There's a lot of cute little boutique shops along the street. Also, Prince Street is really good. So all of those streets, um, you're gonna find awesome shopping. So just kind of explore in your own time. All right, one of my favorite stores here in Nolita is called Natura, and this is a Brazilian skincare brand, and all of their products are vegan, made from sustainable ingredients from the Amazon rainforest, and they support the local community. I love their Kronos line, and this item in particular um, is like the most hydrating, um, amazing cream I've ever used. I'm absolutely obsessed with it. Their shampoo is actually tested on spider webs, um, so what it does is it fills in any of the holes that are in your hair naturally to make it really smooth and shiny. And I use this one and I love it. Um, this is their best-selling cream. This is the Castagna Nut. And that's the thing, when you're shopping all day, uh, you need like something to keep your skin moisturized in this freezing cold weather. So stop and try some of their products. Um, they're lovely and I promise you won't be disappointed. 
So this is uh, the corner of Broom and Broadway. It's where the Howitt Building is located. It was built in 1857, and this is actually the first building in the world to utilize a passenger elevator. Wow, fancy. Yeah, in fact, like the whole, every single day, people would line up around the block uh, just to ride the elevator. <laughs> That's it's true, it's true. That's thrilling. Yeah, kids would like <laughs> beg their parents to bring them here. What year was this? 1857. Well, today, you know, it has one of my favorite stores inside. It's called Artists and Fleas. They're also in the Chelsea Market, so if you saw my seven-day guide, uh, same store. So there's tons of local artists that make all different types of things. They have jewelry, they have purses, they have sunglasses, they have cards, um, all inside of there. So. When you come to this spot, definitely don't miss Artists and Fleas. Have you mm. been to Artists and Fleas? Uh, yeah, I have. There's a few in the city. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. it's yeah. nice. Love it. Man, one of my favorite Soho spots is Prince Street Pizza, but I'm telling you guys, I don't know what's been going on, but as you can see, the line has gotten ridiculous as time has gone on here. So if you don't want to wait in an hour long line, then just head to Bleecker Street Pizza. It's in Greenwich Village, but it's really good. Um, Lombardi's Pizza is also here. But who wants to wait in this line, man? Too long now, too long. For those sneaker heads out there, I found this kind of hidden shop that has the most incredible selection of sneakers. Uh, it's inside of American Eagle. It's called Urban Necessities. You can't actually enter without going through American Eagle all the way to the back. And they have a massive selection of any type of sneaker you can imagine. Yeezys, Jordans, all the ones. I don't know much about sneakers, but there's like $15,000 sneakers in here. Absolutely nuts. So make sure to go inside American Eagle to the back room and you'll find it there. Those buildings where uh, David Bowie used to live right here. On Lafayette. Man, it's so interesting because there's so many celebrity sightings here. Yeah, I know yeah. a lot about the city. I'm a tour guide. It's not a big deal. <laughs> no big deal. Don't worry about it. <laughs> we need a little break from the cold outside, so we're here at Eileen's Cheesecake. This has been here since 1975. Yeah, Frank Sinatra used to love this cheesecake, actually. Whoa, and some people say it's New York's best cheesecake. Now we got two flavors here. We got their plain traditional cheesecake. And then the man working behind the counter told me that this is his favorite and the best one. This is a raspberry cheesecake. So let's try them both. Uh, let's start with this one. Okay. Get a little slice. Okay. Whoa. That's, good. that's a real deal. Yeah, just keep eating it. Woo, that's good. Wait, hey, hold up. <laughs> We gotta try the next one. <laughs> He's already eaten like half of it. <laughs> you see this? Unbelievable. Don't shame me. <laughs> How dare you shame me? Let's try the raspberry. Let's do it. Mmm. That's very good too. I like this better because I like the fruit. Don't miss the spot. I'm so glad you introduced this to me. I didn't even know about this place. <laughs> so thank yeah. you. All right, let's feast. Let's eat. There are tons of sightseeing spots here in Soho, Nolita and Little Italy, and we are at one of them. This is the old St. Patrick's Cathedral. Yeah. yeah, it was built in 1810. Our, one of the architects was Jean-Francois Mangin, who also designed, <laughs> thank you very much, who also designed City Hall here in New York. Oh! And actually, this was used in uh, The Godfather for the famous baptism scene. Oh, wow. yes! When Michael Corleone takes down all the other heads of the five family. He's in there getting his, uh, you know, family baptized. Pretty cool. Amazing. <laughs> One of the cool things I did here um, is they have catacombs tours. So you can actually go into the catacombs below the church. You can actually see here, it's a like glass floor. Um, and you do this by candlelight. It's really spooky. Um, so if you're into ghost stories, definitely check that out. It's one of the things that I think you should definitely do when you visit the city. Yeah. But there's tons of other sightseeing spots. So why don't we go check out the other ones? Yeah. So, Soho is also a really popular place for celebrity sightings. Yeah, for sure. We're actually in front of Balthazar. This is one of the big celebrity hangouts. Uh, I actually met uh, Cameron Diaz here. For real? Yeah, we dated for like six months. Oh, it's yeah, absolutely. Yeah. But yeah, this is a good place if you want to go meet some celebrities. They're like during Fashion Week, all the photographers line up out all here. All the paparazzi. Yeah. They'll ignore you, but you no. can see it. They usually don't ignore me, though. They take lots of pictures yeah, of me. Yeah, you are it's a really celebrity annoying. here. Yeah, hey, what's up, man? I'll give you, sign an autograph later. <laughs> Sorry, it's just another person. Another great sightseeing spot that we stumbled upon is here. It's the Elizabeth Street Garden. Yeah, it's run by the community, uh, and they, you know they kind of keep it nice and everything. It's a nice place to escape from, uh, you know, 
expensive shopping and <laughs> food and stuff. Yeah. Come here and enjoy nature. Yeah, and there's tons of like statues all over the place yeah. too. Hmm. Let's Distracts see. you from how much money you spent. Exactly. <laughs> we found this. So unfortunately, uh, when you're in the garden, you can't sit or stand anywhere. So you have to find some other way to exist here. Like a <laughs> levitation. <laughs> Figure it out. <laughs> We are here in Little Italy. Little Italy is so small now, it's actually shrinking in size. And to me, it's quite touristy, but I still think that if you've never been here, it is worth walking by. We're gonna be walking along Mulberry Street. Little Italy pretty much lasts from Broome to Canal. So let's begin our, our walk right now. But first, let's not get hit by a vehicle. <laughs> okay. So you can find some like kind of touristy Little Italy gifts like forget about it you see that <laughs> and my friend's dad used to say this all the time but tons of italian stuff <laughs> obviously we're in little italy so actually the first tour i met you on you were giving me a tour of this area so you know it really well so what are some of the spots like around here that are worth seeing right uh so there is some uh some history still in the neighborhood um so across the street here we are at the corner of grand and mulberry you have oliva which is actually a cheese shop that's been there since 1892 ah. behind us right here yeah. You have Ferrara, which is a pastry shop and coffee shop that's been there since 1892 as well. Whoa. Yeah, and you also have Irasi and Co., which is, uh, they sell all kinds of, like, housewares and uh, trinkets and gifts and all kinds of stuff that's been there since 1910. It's open, like, two hours of the day. They're always running around. They leave, like, <laughs> be back in two hours or whatever stuff. But it's really, really cool. You kind of get, like, a peek back. They and these... still sell CDs there. Yeah. Oh, what? I don't know if you, the viewers know what CDs are, but they still sell them there. <laughs> So antiques. So those are like three places that are authentic Italian yeah, here. Much. Okay, yeah. so yeah. those are the places to stick to. That yeah. will be all in the bubble up guide, uh, you guys. So you can get like all of the good spots for Little Italy in the guide. It will be linked below. All right, let's continue. <laughs> Two things you need to try when you come to uh, Oliva's. This is the arancini. And this is like a rice ball, and you can, it gives you some sauce that you can dip, really nice and savory. And these are the ricotta balls. And if you like ricotta cheese, you gotta get that because they're really tasty. Again, you can dip that right in the red sauce to make the perfect little Italian snack. Delicious. So we're at the corner of Hester and Mulberry. This is where Umberto's Clam House used to be. This is actually where Crazy Joe Gallo was murdered on his 42nd birthday in 1973. Yes. He actually stumbled out of the restaurant and died the right here on the street. That's right. He had gone to the Copacabana earlier that night and watched Don Rickles. Oh, look cool. at that. That's the interesting thing about Little Italy. There's so much like um, mafia yeah. history here. It's a good thing there wasn't uh, Yelp back then because that would have definitely been a one-star <laughs> review for him. There's a bullet hole from the murder right here. It happened right here. And you can still see um, the name of the old restaurant on the sidewalk. On Mulberry Street is one of my favorite stores. I featured them in my Greenwich Village guide, but this is actually where their main location was, Mulberry and Grand. And they have tons of really adorable things, like look at these sunglasses. Check the Greenwich Village guide to see what I purchased. I hope you liked it. <laughs> It's dinner time. We are here at Blue Ribbon Brasserie. This has been a local establishment since 1992. Yeah. And uh, you're like very confused about the dish in front of us, I yeah. see. Well, they have like the little bone there and you have like the, the what is it, marmalade inside? Yeah, so bone what we got marmalade. here, this um, is a beef marrow and oxtail marmalade. It's very fancy. I don't get out much. <laughs> It looks good. Uh, but you know, this place is a spot that uh, all the local chefs come late night after closing their kitchen. So this is a real That's deal. Right. Yep. They serve seafood here. They serve steak. Burgers, um, even burgers. Burgers. Yeah. yeah, a lot of good things. So now all you do is you take the bone marrow out of here. Spread it, right? And you can just spread it. This is one of their signature dishes oh, here. Yeah, <laughs> what do you think? It's good. It's good, right? It's like creamy and savory. Dinner has been served. We got a few dishes. Tom, what did you get here? The fried chicken. Yeah, and we got some collard greens under there. No, but that's what they're known for, actually. Yeah, this is one of their signature dishes. Um, then we have the hanger steak here, which has some roast mushrooms, some green beans, and some uh, french fries. 
And then another one of their signature dishes is their matzo ball soup. And you can see that right here. I'm so curious about your dish. Am I doing this wrong? Is this not how you do fried chicken? I'm just gonna eat it with my hands. I'm definitely gonna hit a bone here. Mmm. What are you thinking? It? Good, right? Some type of paprika in there as well. <laughs> I, think, uh, I think you were right on that. No, it's good. It's very good. Yeah. Mmm. Crispy on the outside, juicy on the inside. Exactly perfection. Right? Melt in your mouth. Get a big spoonful. Mmm. That is perfect for like a cold day like today. Well, we're gonna enjoy this food and uh, we'll see you at the bar. So it's our last stop of the day. We're here at Spring Lounge. What makes this place so special? So this is like a little dive bar on the corner of Spring and Mulberry. And it's been a bar since like the 1920s. It actually opened illegally during Prohibition. And it's been all kinds of different bars, but uh, it's like a little dive bar that people from the neighborhood come to. I used to live right around the corner. Oh, really? Yeah, I lived in an apartment with seven roommates when I first moved to New York. Living so it wasn't the high life of Soho, but we used to come here a lot. It's a cool place. Yeah, and I see they have a large selection of beers yeah. on tap and bottled beers. They also have a cider on tap, so I got some of that. Yeah. I just like, like the quirky atmosphere here. Yeah, that's right. You know, and it's like all this type of stuff on the wall, making it just like fun. And yeah. Good place to come for happy hour and stuff Very like that. chill place too compared to the rest of Soho. Yes, very well, chill. Cheers to a fun day. Cheers. Cheers. Thanks, John. Thank you. Thanks for watching. If you like this video, remember to subscribe, follow me on Instagram at Sarah Funky, and check out Tom's channel too. That's amazing. Um, NYC. Absolutely amazing. Um, you can join a tour with Tom. He's taking over my Secrets of New York tour starting in December. Yep, Very excited to have you. So we'll see you guys a little bit later. Bye. Bye.